Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host, Alex, and we are gonna be continuing our series on the new features coming to Laravel 5.4. This is part five of the series we're gonna go through. Um, this time we're gonna talk about some uh, the ability to make controllers with models. It's something I think I meant to do as a separate video when I was kind of outlining the course, and then I think I talked about it a little bit in the first video, but we'll just kind of re review it and make sure we got all the information that we need. Um, it should be a pretty quick one. Um, I'm exhausted tonight. I am exhausted, ready to go to bed, and um, I know I won't have time tomorrow, so I thought I'd do the videos tonight before I head to bed. So you guys are welcome. Uh, I got the videos. I'm, gonna, I'm really trying to get more of these videos up. Um, this year going into 2017 that's kind of my goal get more videos and on a more consistent basis so i'll be doing some i'm going to talk to you guys about my new schedule coming up soon but let's dive into this okay so you guys are familiar last time um i'm in a laravel project over here in the controller and this this concept's so easy i'm just going to dive into it get done with it and we'll move on to the next feature so this is basically the ability that when you're making controllers you can also tie models to controllers and generate them using the artisan commands so we obviously had the ability to make controllers using artisan commands in the last quite a few versions of Laravel. It's definitely nothing new. However, um, we we didn't have the ability to make a model with our controller, which was always kind of a little annoying. And there's some real benefits to t building your models with your controllers. And the other thing I want to show you is even if you already have a model and you're creating a controller to tie to an existing model, how you can tie it to that existing model and kind of the benefits you get by doing it that way through um, the artisan command. So that's kind of the stuff I want to show you. It's pretty easy, but I just want to make sure you guys know what's going on. Um, so really quick before we dive into it, I just want to let's take a look over here at the terminal. And you guys are familiar. You have these make commands, right? So you have, in fact, if we just do make you can see all the make commands that you have. So we can make notifications, controllers, middleware, migrations, listeners, providers, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna read them all, but you guys see, you can make almost anything that you need to do in Laravel with these make commands. So they're really, really handy. So we know that we had the make, um, we make migrations a lot. Um, and in migrations, you can tie them to models. And when you make a model, you can make a migration. So that works out pretty good. Um, and that's how I would generally do it. I'd usually make a controller, then I'd make a model, and then I would make a migration to tie to my model. But I want to show you guys a better way. Um, and basically the way that you can do it now is you can do BHP artisan make. We'll make controller just like we always have. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger because I wanna get this onto one line to make it easy to read. Okay, so then, just like before, you have the name of the controller. So let's go ahead in this project, let's create a, um, what kind of controller should we make? Let's say we're making a blog, so let's do a post controller. Okay, so we're gonna name this con post controller. Again, nothing new up to this point. So we do PHP artisan make controller, post controller, and we could go ahead and click enter and it's gonna make that controller, right? Cool, so now, um, what, the other thing we know we can do is we can do a resource, right? This creates a resourceful controller for all your CRUD functions. That's awesome. But one of the things you can do now is type in model. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's go ahead and type in model. You don't need uh, quotes. And let's tie it to the post model, right? Because we're going to create a post model or you would tie it to the post model for this. So let's do that. Let's go and click enter. And what's awesome now is that Laravel will bring this up that says, hey, there's, no cur there's not currently a post model in your project, in this project. So do you want to create it? In this case, we would want to create it because we need one, we said to make one with it, all that kind of stuff. So we go ahead and type yes, or you can just click enter, that's the default. And it will go ahead and create not only the model, or not only the controller, but also the model, right? So it's got both of these. So let's just take a look at this real quick. Open this up and take a look inside of Adam. Man, Adam has been freezing on me a ton lately and hopefully, I don't know what the problem's been, but I've been kind of getting my wits end with Adam. I'm a big fan, but the freezing is just like, I don't know how to handle that. It's just crazy. Anyway, so um, I'm crossing my fingers that we don't have a freezing problem. So now you can see we've got this post.php. Just trust me, it wasn't there before. And it's just a basic open post, nothing exciting, right? So now let's go ahead and take a look over at our um, controller, HTTP controllers. We now have our post controller, great, just as we expect. And let's take a look at what happens when we tie it to our model. So not only did we get our model, 
but it didn't it created the model for us which is awesome but it also adds some benefits to the actual controller um, so one thing also I want to mention is that now in level 5.4 when you do a when you tie this together with the model a default controller that you generate with the artisan commands is resourceful now by default so as you can see here we have all the crud functions in here without really having to add that flag like we used to have to okay first thing you'll notice here at the top when you tie your model in when you're generating them together is it ties it in at the top so it actually imports our model so we can just use the post command because it's already imported that namespace okay so this is really handy you'll also notice obviously it's set all this stuff up for us as we get down to some of these um our resourceful controllers always brought in our request, so they're still doing that, which is good. That way you have access to things like uh, requests, like, I don't know, whatever's in your request, uh, name or whatever is inside of your forms. So you have access to that, that's what that does. But now in some of these, like when you wanna show a specific post, and normally your ID for this would be something like domain.com slash um, posts slash, hope you couldn't hear that slash like one or slash 102 or something and that's the id for your post right and um now what it's going to do is it's going to take this id number and it's going to automatically go out find the post because it knows which model to tie to and it's going to pull that in directly using this post variable so this is kind of fancy again this is actually nothing new this was available last this is implicit um implicit binding this is um we're type hinting this post variable to the post object, okay? So this is actually nothing new. This was available in previous versions. However, the, the ability to do this was available, but it wasn't automatic like it is now. So now it's pretty cool because when you tie with that artisan command, you tie the model to it, this comes automatically as a free bonus basically. So now what happens is if we typed in say this domain, it's gonna go out to 102. Um, it's gonna use that ID number or whatever relationship you set up and it's going to go out and find the post with the id using the model up here and find that post with that id of 102 and it's going to import that into the post variable and you'll have access to that right away so you could automatically do things like post um, title or post content or whatever you whatever you're doing with your with your post but you have access to this right away so you guys know that before what we used to do is this used to come in as like an id right so it came in like as a bare id and then you would do post equals post find or fail or something um, or you can just do find um, find and then you would find by id right and then you would have access this would then be the full post okay so we're basically be able to skip this step and this happens automatically behind the scenes as we pull it in so let's just go ahead and undo all this and that's what you're getting with all this so that's kind of nice that because you you set the models up already, you have access to this post object right from the get-go, which is awesome. So you can just go ahead and call it in, or if you don't need to do anything and you just wanna pass it into the view, you can go ahead and create like post.show here with, um, you know, post, or what is it? Po I always do it this way, with post, post. So you got that option already. So you can just go ahead and do this and you don't need to do anything else. It cleans up your controller really, really nice, okay? So that's basically all it is. Last thing I'll show you is, before we go, is just um, just so that you know how it works, if we actually did another command here where we did php artisan make, um, make controller, let's make another controller this time and let's call it, um, We'll call it the updates, right? You're making an update, right? But it's going to link to the post. We're going to use the same model. So let's call it the update controller. We're going to create a new controller called update controller. And now let's tie it to the model that is post, okay? So we're tying it to a model that already exists, okay? You'll have multiple controllers going to the same model, and this model is called post. We're going to tell it that inside of here. When we go ahead and click enter, you can see that it noticed we already had the post controller and it just, or sorry, the post model and went ahead and just made the controller. So now we go over to our update controller. It's obviously gonna look the same as the post controller, but it's pulling in post 
and you're going to get the type hinting for post where appropriate, like here and here and here. Okay, so then it's going to actually type hint the post for you, which is awesome. It sets it all up. So that's what's really nice is it actually will, when you use that model flag, it actually is going to go see if you have the that model created. If you do, it's going to go ahead and just tie it into it nice and easy. If you don't, it's going to make it in addition to tying it in. So I recommend every time you do that make controller, unless you have some random use case that you don't need it, I highly recommend now you just get used to using the dash dash model flag just to make your life so much easier. Take advantage of that type hinting. It automatically imports it. The number one mistake when I get, um, uh, when people are comp emailing me and stuff like that or uh, <laughs> I don't know, tweeting me um, with questions, the number one problem I see with everything that people send me is they forget to import their model, okay? So you're in your controller. This is bar none. The, it's the simplest error to fix and it's the most common. People forget to do this. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll forget to import it and then they'll be down here trying to use post and they're getting an error. And that's why they're getting an error is because they didn't import it. Number one problem, not even a debate. This is the number one cause of errors of everything I see with Laravel, and now it's solved automatically when you use that model flag. So just get used to it, all right? And then there might be a rare case you're not using it, that you don't wanna tie it to a model or something, and you can go ahead and just not add the flag, but just get used to always doing it, all right? That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're gonna talk about some new Blade stuff, components, and um, it's basically very similar to view components. So we'll go over that real quick, pretty easy stuff too. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video.